I think team. I I'm repping team all the way. I'm on team's corner. Sparrow in five. Uh, team in four. Uh, team in four. Uh, team in four. Okay, well, without even seeing the draw, I'll just throw out a name who I actually think of somebody who's very good on hardcore. Uh, US player, Sophia Kennan. Kennan, Kennan, Kennan. We're back. Here we are. Uh, thank you for so many new people who have joined over the last few days. Uh, we really appreciate all your support. Uh, yeah, thank you very much to everybody who's taken the time to uh, follow us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter, and yeah, subscribe. To and the importantly, YouTube subscribe. Yeah. yeah. So the, it's it's shooting up. We're so growing. We're growing. And keep um, on sharing it and keep well. Just want to see more comments from you. Yeah. Like, drop if, some comments in. The Australian Open's over. But trust me, there's a lot of tennis to talk about, it and there's always there's, there never stops. There's always different events coming up. So um, yeah, let's get straight into it. So, the women's final. What a way to start! Literally, what Kenin Magarusa. Um, My girl Kenin, she storms in. She <laughs> blows everybody out the water. <laughs> Sophia Kenin, <laughs> she's Australian <laughs> Open champion. I don't want to say I predicted it. No, but you did, to be fair. You did I well. I did predict. But you wasn't really that convinced yourself when you picked it. I wasn't, but I just knew her hardcourt form was just that good. Yeah, but you've got to be honest. You picked Osaka. Osaka was your main she one. Was, Kenny she was, was like the top a ten pick. A, but it was a contingency for out, plan. For an outside pick, I think, well, if anybody put a bet on that, then send us a cut. Yeah, what would she have been <laughs> at? What would she have been at? I think, like she was 20s? I think she was 15. So. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. So, so anyway, about the match, did you watch all the match? Watched all the match. Uh, I thought Muguruza, she came off to a, well, came out to a good start. Mm. She really was attacking the ball well in the first set. Mm. Had Kenin on the run a lot of the first set. I, yep. just, I thought Kenin might be able to get back in it at the end of the first set. I don't, I don't think that, really. I remember mm. after watching the first set, I really did think this is now Muguruza is quite comfortable. I feel like she was then going to take the second set and that would have been it because her experience and the way faith, she played. That's why he didn't no, have I'd, my faith. If you watched the first set, you should have seen literally how Muguruza was playing. Her serve was so <laughs> strong. That was what it was all about. She like was I serving it. Like, her first serve was like 75%, like quite high. And I remember and saying to you, this, is, this second and third set's all going to be down to the, her first serve. Yeah. No, you did say that. I remember. Yeah, you watched at me at the time. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> what happened? She... Uh, it's just started not going in. I think it was down to about 40% or mm. something on that first serve. Yeah, and yeah. Ken him, wow, she just came back and hit him winner after winner. Yeah, but I think even when she was hitting her first serve in, Ken him was, she was always, she was finding a way, just like she did in the last round. No one saw her doing that then. In the last round, she did the same thing and found the way to be, to win. And but she I seems to be doing it again. Like, it's so impressive. And people keep saying about how Kenin is like this massive outsider to win it. Her form in 2019 is ridiculous. She's beating yeah. everyone. She's beat Andreescu, the girl we keep saying how amazing she is. Barty, yep. uh, Pliskova. She's beaten a lot of big names. Osaka. Yeah. She's had she's had a brilliant brilliant year really. And I feel like coming into I know that was last year, but she's coming in off that form. She's not really been winning much because she's been faltering at semi-finals or finals of different, respective different tournaments. But on the big occasion, when it mattered, she gave her a game. And after Muguruza took that first set, it yeah. must have been very easy for her to get down on herself. But she didn't look down, though. She looked like she was going to come out firing. It's like we said, set. her attitude's different to other tennis players we've seen, isn't very. it? She's very feisty. Very. That's what you described her as. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's, got, she's got a fire in her. And that's why I think, I think the crowd that was out there originally was supporting Muguruza mm. and everybody turned sides and they saw how much that meant to Ken and how much he was prepared to fight for that Australian Open title and by the end she was a fan favourite Oh, I yeah, think for sure. people are going to be looking at her for well future tournaments. Sophia now. Kenin now is one to watch like people yeah. are Andrew people, are gonna, people will, will be scared to play her because she has the game and the way she plays is well, just... You saw that one, well, I think it was the pinnacle point of the match, really. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. She had that one big game where I think she was love 40 down on her own side. Oh, yeah, yeah I remember, yeah. And she comes up with three amazing yep. winners in one game in a row. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. 
that's like world number one Grand Slam winning champion yeah. form. So funny enough, deserves though, it. the reason why I think what you just said there is the most impressive is the first set. Obviously, she lost six four, yep. and the second set and the third set was six two six two to uh, Muguruza. However, the third set she was serving much better, Muguruza. She was actually playing her. She raised her yeah. game quite a bit, and like you said, she managed to get to love forty. Yep. On Kenin's serve, I think it was at two all of at the early two stages all, think, of the yeah. of the fir- of the final set, and then from that moment on, I've never seen someone bounce back and have so so much fight. She wasn't just playing it safe and winning; them. she was hitting winner after winner after winner. And it's not and like to get back to letter. to get back to Juice. I think she hit three winners, and yeah. then to get to advantage was another winner as well. Yeah. It was just amazing. It really is. And she was throwing like everything champion. but the kitchen sink at her, and yeah. she wasn't going away. She was. Darting left, right, set, going for everything. And it was a really fitting final, do you not think? Like, I'm happy that was the final. Like, yeah. We watched a, a few of the different women's matches, but for me, by far, that was the best match. Not just because it was the final or what was at stake. For me, the quality of tennis in that match, what we saw, and like the pendulum from one to the other, was and so impressive. I was literally, I could not stop watching it. And the fact that she was 21 years old as well. And she, before that tournament, she hadn't even got past the quarterfinals yet. <laughs> And then she just goes straight and wins it, and the first time she does. So, yeah, yeah. Nah, she's certainly on the rise. But like we'll talk about later on in the in the in the episode, a lot of American young players coming up now in the men's as well. Yep, we're seeing a definitely a bit of a resurgence with American tennis. So indeed, yeah. Well, what else do you want to say about the final? Anything else uh, for the women's? I felt a little bit bad for Muguruza. She. That could have been her third Grand Slam. She's already complete. At the, well, it's like you said in the past episode. Uh, she's won on grass. She's won on clay. Was it would have been nice, short? yeah, Which, for but, her. But that's maybe why she hard court. She's just got a little bit more to go to get there to win on the hard court. Maybe. The thing is, the way she's bounced back to get to this level now, from like she's not she's been out of it for like a baby a year. She's not really reached this level. No. But I now see her kicking on from this, and I do think she's going to be. We'll get on to it later, but she's going to be my pick now for the French. Well, Although of whatever we've said, I just think that she's able to ch- on on that surface. I was going to say Wimbledon. Well, Wimbledon, possibly. I think. Well, I remember when she won Wimbledon, and she, she was unplayable that mm. year. Yeah, I, yeah. Don't, I don't. I don't remember. Seeing I remember the French. winning the French more than Wimbledon. So no. For me, that's why we probably <laughs> contrast. <laughs> I remember the French more because I, I love the French. It's my you favourite love your clay quarters. That's love why it. I'm, I'm more of a true Brit. ITV4, I was watching all the games uh, and honestly, she was incredible. And I, do, I think she's going to be my tip to win that. But we'll save that. Honestly. Yeah. We've, got a lot, we've got a lot of tennis to be played before there. Indeed, yeah. Just hope she's not injured. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hope both of them aren't. Yeah. I hope we can see, uh, yeah, both of them get to a couple and more And Andreska, I want her to be back as well. I think we all do. That'll be good to see. I just want to see what she's like on clay as well. I've not really seen much of her no, on the surface. I can't say I have either, to be honest. It'd be interesting to see if Serena turns up to any to any. She'll more. turn up, but... Corey Goff, maybe. Maybe she's got something to say about uh, <laughs> Kenin or Andreescu getting any, any further. So. Well, the women's game, I must admit, is looking good for, the, for, the, for young people coming through. I it's exciting for to be a young player in the women's game at the moment. It must be, you, must have, you must be really excited because you know you've got a chance. There's not that one dominant figure now. I don't you've think got Serena been, Williams. Since Serena, there's since Serena, you've not really had it. And there's been others trying to take over, but there's no one's winning three or four Grand Slams a year like and like Serena was no. doing, like taking no, over no. like that. There's one player on top for a few months, then another player on top for a few months, and Osaka. She, you never know which one's going to turn up. Yeah, but that's good though for the young yeah, players, I've, all the young tennis players, all the, all the young women out there. They know that they've got a chance. Anyone I, between one to fifty, really, I feel like, well, I if they give, really give themselves a good shot and have a great, a good run of form, they have the potential to win a slam, I and that stays to, with you forever. I don't. I used to give the women's game a bad rap, but <laughs> just because it wasn't, I, I think it's becoming much more exciting though. Just the level of competition has raised so much in the past few years. It's just nice to see that there's so many different players who could win it. And there's a lot you more. You go into every event, you don't really know. I think what was missing from women's tennis was the power players. Uh-huh. And now there's a, a lot of them. may have been changing the rackets, the balls, I mm-hmm. don't know. But the rallies that they, some of them can have are so fast and powerful. Obviously, then still not on the speed of the men's. Yeah, but I don't know about that, though, because we've had Serena, and Serena's been doing it for ages. 
Yeah, but she's, she's been, been she's, she's been, been doing that. Yeah, but she's been beating people too easily with the power. Now everyone seems there seems to be a group of people about are catching up on her. Ten, yeah, yeah. All, but the, the, I understand what you're saying. But the Serena of say five years ago, six years ago, oh, would yeah. still be beating all of these now. Easy. So she is like we need to put more respect on Serena's name. What she's achieved in the in the sport is like no everyone's, far, everyone's no, had to raise their game. It's remarkable. It's remarkable. So yeah, like I don't think any of the, I don't see any player resembling what she's done. However, in this nat- in this climate as it is at the moment, it's exciting for all these young players Very. because they're entering the tournament with the chance of winning because there's so many different options and opportunities, really. Well, it makes it very exciting going into yeah. the next Grand Slam. But I think talking about this dominance, let's just move straight on to the men. Let's move because on to it. <laughs> Novak Djokovic wins again. He wins again. You did say I'm it. I'm sorry to say that I said that one as well. That's it's getting a little bit. Uh, oh, a little bit I'm not bad. shaking your hand this nah, week. Nah, well that one was. <laughs> I think the odds before the tournament. It was. I said. Yeah, no, you're not getting. You're not getting any of my sympathy for that. Pick. Yeah, I mean, it's he was the favourite to win it, and for good reason. I, I like I said after the first round, I didn't think he was going to drop a set leading up to the final. Mm. He didn't. Oh, okay. Like, yeah, yeah. Leading up to the final. In the final, you know, it's going to be a tough. Well, he's had so many five set finals yeah, yeah. that you know team wasn't going to go away that easy. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. And the thing is with these top three as well, like when you get to a final and they're in the fifth set of it, they're always going to win it. I think it was like hundred percent record when they get to the fifth set of a thing. I I, obviously, when they're playing against each other, that's a bit difficult. I think, got to lose. I think the only time he's lost in a five set was against Murray in the final. All oh, right, I yeah, think yeah. That's Djokovic potentially, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it just goes to show. Anyway, let's rewind a bit. Let's talk about yeah. the actual final. So Dominic team. My, my, my prediction at the beginning, I said I literally said to you that I think he's going to beat Sparrow. And then you was going this confident with Sparrow. Re- rewind, rewind. Yeah, let's rewind Your a bit. Pick. <laughs> I said Sparrow in five. No, Sparrow in five. And I said Dominic team in four. What happened? Dominic team in four. Thank well you. Well done. Yeah, a handshake for that, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Very good prediction. But yeah, no. He's your guy. You've been following him since the real young... Hey, I'm sure most of these people have. Like, Dominic Team has been a name in tennis for a while. It's just never really been able to get to that level where he's competing with the top players. Yeah. Um, I now. think finally now, the last, not even just now, last two, three years, he has been at that level where he is competing with the top players. Yeah. However, as much as I say that, He's competing to a level in terms of he's making it a competitive match. Is he ever going to beat one of these top three players in a proper, in a slam semi final or a final? Yeah, he's done it with Nadal, beat yeah. Nadal in the semis. Impressive. Is he able to get, get, the, get, the, get it across the line and win the final? No, he's proven it again. He's unable, he's unable when the, when the times, when it's really critical and crucial that he's not able to do it yet. I'm going to have to. Shoot you down a yeah, little bit. Yeah, I know you're going to. I just you're gonna. think you're I'm being... I'm for it today. For somebody who's such a big, well, fan of team yourself, and for you to give him such a hard time about... He's got... He's still young. No, 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 no. He's got to you two... He's got saying. two slam finals. He's got to the French Open final against the best ever yeah. clay court player that's ever graced this yeah. planet and lost in five sets, yeah, okay. which is incredible. Yeah. No one's ever... Really, barely taken a set off him. In I think it was four sets, wasn't it? In the no, five final. sets. All right. And then he got to, yeah, the final of the hard court, what, well, well, Australian Open. The one person who's won the Australian <laughs> Open the most times yeah. out of anybody, and he's taken him. He looked like he could win it at one point, but he just came up a little bit short in five sets. Okay. Incredible team, yeah. I think. But I'm when not. they say there's no I in team, <laughs> there is in this one. <laughs> 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 That's good. Right? <laughs> Just waiting to pull that one out of the bag. Don't you worry. I don't even have any. Uh, <laughs> I get, I get your point, and I'm not going to dismiss his efforts in the French one against Nadal because I understand that. And I can, you can arguably say the same thing with the Djokovic in the Australian Open. No one wins it as many times as him. It's his yep. best surface, his best tournament. Definitely. Yeah? However, Djokovic was down and under, mate. He was in. He looked like he was about to die, mate, in the in the second set. But was he really? Or third set, even. But was he really though? I don't know what he was doing. But it was it was teams to lose at that point. At two one up, it was teams to lose. Team you had. You can't ever say that against Djokovic. That people are even saying that he puts on this pissed off like he's. 
ah, oh, I'm so down in the dumps just to give the opponent, like, I don't know if that's true or not, that he gives the other well, opponent, he, like, a full sense of security, like, they've already got the match, like, so, and then he turns it on again in, like, the next set, because he, he, he never goes away. There was a lot of games, gamesmanship from Djokovic. I didn't like it. I, just I didn't like I, the way you... I don't think anybody likes his gamesmanship. He'll always call the medical, he'll yeah, always he, go... He'll... You can say that they all do that, yeah, yeah but they're... you don't, like, it's just the way he does it. And I just what, don't like I don't about, like his mannerism. What do you think? About I'm gonna have a lot of people give me a lot of hate for these views because there's a lot of fans who love Djokovic. I feel like you either love him or you hate him. He's very much like Marmite. Yeah, I'm not saying the thing is with me. The reason I don't want to hate's really strong. It's just I don't like him because of the his whole mannerisms afterwards and the way he um, the way he t- like say if he's won a set the way he reacts and it just seems like very big headed and like him sushing different people in the crowd. Don't get me wrong, it must be hard being that guy. It's like he's always portrayed as like the evil guy. When you've got the three, he's like always the one. Whoever Djokovic yeah. is playing, you're always going to get more fans for the person he's oh. playing against him. <laughs> always. And when someone is so good, you're going to get haters as well. Like, that's yeah. natural. Like The best people in every discipline, there's always going to be haters. You look at, say, Ronaldo, the amount of people who hate him. Floyd Mayweather. Floyd Mayweather. The greatest always going to get haters. Yeah. And at the end of the day, like right now, you've got to, it's hard to say that he's not the greatest. I would like to say maybe Nadal or Federer, but... He is definitely in that in that discussion. All right. You're getting a bit uh, no, wound up here. No, I'm getting wound up because <laughs> I just don't like his whole his whole manner, like the way he was talking to the umpire. What did you think about the stop clock? He, he ran it down twice. Did Hit you think sp- it was fair? Of course, it's fair. He, he, he deserved to have the second what second you, serve. What do you make of this? Uh, I was watching him quite closely. He touched the umpire's shoe as well. Did you see that? Uh, yeah. What do you make of this? Ten bounces of the ball he does every time before he serves. It's very, I don't know. It's no, it's, listen, I don't care. You can do as many bounces as you want in the time thing. If the if the shot clock then got, runs out, you can't bounce the ball anymore. What you need you, to start. You need to serve. What do you think of the, what he said to the umpire? It's rude. It's rude. I well, understand well, you're in the. Well done. Well done. You made yourself famous. Well done. Listen, you made yourself. Famous. I don't want to come across as a hypocrite because there's a lot of players who do that. I just think the way he approaches certain situations, I just don't get excited when he wins. I just don't like it. I hate the fact that in games he looks like completely down and out, and then all of a sudden it's just some like... Sign of a champion. Yeah, no, it is. It's just, I don't know, I just don't like it. That's just me as a I person. Like, you just just don't, not... I just don't think you like him. That's yeah, and I just struggle. Like For me, I want to come on this podcast and be honest and truthful. I can't just... Blow, blow smoke up his ass, basically. Everyone's <laughs> always going to prefer the model professionals of Federer and Nadal. I mean, Nadal's no model professional. He complains all the time. No, but on, off the court, he seems more model professional. Than, yeah, I think sure. that's it as well. Yeah, off the court as well. It does play, it does play an impact. But um, back onto the actual final itself. Team, I'm going to give hats off, respect to team. You was incredible, mate. You played exceptional tennis for the first three sets. Yep. The fourth set was yours to continue that level, and what happened is he dropped off. He dropped his level. If he even maintained at that I level, was, I think it was that backhand, mate. It just was. Djokovic hit did and miss. get much better. It was hit and miss that backhand. Uh, yeah, that's it the thing. He wasn't needed firing. that. He, his favourite shot is the inside out across the court, and he had that one on lock, but no, not so much in the, the final. Line, down the line backhand, though. The that's down funny. the line backhand where it goes comes across him, and he goes down the line. Yeah. The problem is that was not firing, no, and against not at all. against Djokovic, you need that to fire oh. because otherwise Djokovic will stand towards this side of the court, and he knows where it's going to come every time. Every and time. with his returning skills, like a brick wall, mate, you're never going to get through him. Well, it's incredible. He always stays in every single. I think he was put going. Well, he put team to juice. I think on most of his serves. Yeah, like, he, in that it was it was pretty pretty. He played really well. But the thing is, if team is unable to use that backhand down the line and it's yep. not firing. Unfortunately, after he, he got through the first three sets to, all right without, without using it too much. Sometimes it did work for him, but a lot of the times it was just missing. It was long or wide. And if he's not able to use that shot, from the moment I saw that happen, then I thought, hey, he's yeah. not going to win this. Because you need that against Djokovic. You need to have him questioning whether you can go down this line. Well, so he, the, he's moving more inside. It's on the big points as well. Though. He was going for it. And then if you miss that when you're just trying to win on advantage, you're back to juice and Djokovic is back in the game again. <laughs> And that's all he needs, that little sniff that you're not quite on your form. And he'll he'll just keep putting it back, keep putting it back, keep putting it back. And then he'll finish you at some point. Yeah. Another thing was bothered me about this final. (laughs) Yeah, I'm going to get onto this one as well. Is the scheduling of it. 
Well, the fact that it's at night, you want them to no, play no, no, no. it. <laughs> <laughs> you want them to no, play no, on not that scheduling. <laughs> Greenwich Mean Time. Djokovic got an extra day's rest. Oh. Are you telling me? Are you telling me that in the final, you watched the final? Do you think that had an impact going into the fourth and fifth set that he had an extra day's rest? Not really. Not so if we're basing this upon what we discussed the last when we said that Nadal was making team run around, but you said he was going to just smash Zverev anyway. Yeah, and he did, but it might have been more convincing if he didn't have to, he didn't have that. It, it, if one player has one extra day's rest, do you, not think that's gonna, do you not think that's going to have an impact on the match? Especially if it's going to go to five sets. So how are they supposed to do the schedule? Well, you've, you've, got to, you've got to make some adjustments to make sure they've got one, adequate one rest. One player's always going to play before the other, unless they play at identical times in different stadiums, but they're never going to do that. The semis are always going to be played in that. You could, you could, why, why could you not play it on the same day, but then just have one before and one after? Then they'll complain, why was I on the after one? Why wasn't I playing first? Uh, no. Yeah, no. They, there'd still be another thing to complain about. If they, they, there's always going to be something. Someone's always going to be mistreated in one way or another. Mm. And I don't think you can ever please everybody. And Team will have his fair share. Well, he'll be the one who gets the more rest in... A, next Grand Slam or it all even out at the end of the day I'm sure I don't, I don't know I just get a bit gets just well, annoyed because the team even said it in the after, his, after his interview he was tired he was very humble in his, humble in his thing but he was just yeah. mentally knackered I didn't and, really and hear shattered. his interview much oh I listened to his no the, like the oh, more the oh, press conference oh, the, okay. and he was just shattered he was shattered and literally he, he alluded to the fact that he felt like that first set was the most important set if he won that first set he would have won the match yeah, but you've got to understand that being shattered can also come from adrenaline dump as well. Yeah, of course. It does it like of a has been that. there seven. Especially if you just lost as well, like yeah. it can't be like. Well, if you're going into the biggest match of your life, pretty much, where you think everybody's tipping you, just beating Nadal, everyone who's world number one, and now you're being tipped to be. Are you not disappointed with the outcome of the match? I you wanted Djokovic amazing, to win. I thought it was an amazing. I only I was just wanted a good match, and it was a five setter, and I was. Didn't know who was going to win throughout the whole thing until maybe the start of the fifth, and I thought Djokovic is going to take over. But until then, I thought it was a epic final. Yeah, I thought. No, I did enjoy. It. I think I was just a bit disappointed because yeah. for me, I really <laughs> wanted Team to win. <laughs> I, think I woke up that morning and invested. I was so excited. I thought, Team, come on, this is your moment. Let's do this. Let's do this. I was so pumped about the whole thing. Even after we lost the first set, I was thinking, This is you can still do it. You're playing good tennis. You can do it. You can do it. But then the, he started double faulting at important times. Oh, yeah, he did do that. He, did he that was the... crumbling. At the, he did it against Nadal as yeah. well and just about got through it. But that's what this is what bothers me about it. A lot of the time, it wasn't because he wasn't good enough or wasn't able to do it. He's, he couldn't deal with the pressure. That's it. It's like the adrenaline again. He's been here a few times though, mate. And how many of these plates is he going to have? He's going to be able to open a kitchen with all the plates <laughs> he's got. <laughs> <laughs> There's too many. You can't keep getting all these plates. I don't want to see a plate anymore. I want to see him with a trophy. Well, and he deserves it. He, last year, he won more ATP tournaments than anyone, any other player. He is the, the next best thing who can potentially win a slam. Yeah. I would put him above Medvedev. Him and Medvedev, very close. I think they've both got the ability to be able to do it. Well, both, but is it going to happen? It doesn't look like it at the moment. Both came up short. Because the mentally, they can't, they, can't, they can't cope with either Djokovic, Nadal or Federer. I even Federer. I don't even know if Federer's in the Nah, you've got to put him now. in there, 100%. The last 13 slams, then three of one. Yeah. The last 13. I'd like to see Federer win a few more. And in 2016, there was an interview with Nadal saying, oh, yeah, he reckons that there's so many great players coming through. He feels really threatened by... Um, oh, threatened for what? <laughs> They've not won anything. They're coming close. You can say that, but how good... How, at what stage is close getting just boring well, now? He just got knocked out by one of them. Yeah, but, uh, yeah Nadal, but Djokovic then beats him. Yeah, you're but... never going to beat both. The only person who's beat both in recent years is Stan Wawrinka. He beat... Uh, Djokovic in the semis, or and then I think it was Nadal, Nadal in the final of the U.S. Open, or I think so. Yeah, yeah. he was, or maybe the other way around. Nadal in the semis and then or quarters, yeah. and then Tough Djokovic. Team. He still beat both of them, and that's the only person who's done that in recent years. And do you know why he was able to beat Djokovic? Because he had the same uh, stroke as team, the backhand down the line. I thought you were going to say he had an extra day's rest. <laughs> <laughs> he did have an extra day's rest as well. <laughs> 
but the, so he's got he, your point. He has Team Shot, which Team was not a, unable to execute in the final. He was un, he was able to execute it against Nadal. Why was he not able to execute in the final? Because of the pressure. So at what stage is well, he, he needs to deal with rest. it? He needs, or maybe he didn't have enough rest. It all contributes. And at the end of the day, Team now at this level, I'm bored and I'm sick and tired of keep saying. Oh, he's done really well. I'm really proud of him. I'm saying that as well. It's brilliant what he's done. But please, come on, just do the next step. Win a, win a slam. Win a slam. You're more than capable. Right. You've got the ability. Just keep saying it and it'll happen. I hope so. I really hope so. Don't worry, team. I You're going to win one. I want to see him win. Because there's no point when them three retire and then all of a sudden team and Medvedev are sharing it. How great are they going to feel then? It's the only reason they're winning is because the other three have retired. It's only frustration built out of admiration. So I'm a massive fan, Dominic. I'm a massive so, fan. Exactly. But it's just so, like it's just it, like you say. It it's is frustration. Well, it's, and it's, I'm passionate it's about it. Like, I watch to, it. I, I love tennis. It's going to come to a head at some point. It's, they can't keep playing forever, and they can't keep winning forever. True. Yeah, but I think why they why they're still playing? They will. Djokovic, he's not going to be there forever. Yeah. Nadal. He could probably play the French Open until he's 50 and still keep winning it, <laughs> I think. I think Djokovic can play the US Open or Australian Open until he's 50, and Wimbledon as well. Yeah. But Just Federer, you can't rule him out. Wimbledon and US Open, Federer comes alive. There is, there is two other slams. The French one is mm. banked on Nadal, yeah. and the Australian Open is more or less banked on Djokovic. I think Federer obviously I'm not saying the other two can't compete in the other two as well it's very even but Federer has them as well like he's in the same bracket as Djokovic and Nadal for the last two I think slams, another, in my opinion I think the main reason that you don't want Djokovic to win as well is you see him edging ever yeah. closer to that yeah. most grand slams yeah. of the time now he's three away 20, 19, 17 yep Three away. Twenty Federer, nineteen and Nadal, seventeen. If, if going on my pre- if going on my prediction, it oh, like, give over, mate. He's not mean, having, he's not reaching the twenty this year. No, I didn't say twenty this year. I said he'd win three of the four slams this year. So you year. reckon he'll be on the level with Nadal? I think well, not no. because he's going to win the French. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'll be twenty twenty nine. Unless, t- unless team wins the French, give him some. I would love. I would. Came close. I would love him to. But came close just, last year, mate. He's going to get another plate. For his kitchen, because at the moment Mate. it's just, it's just he's not got that extra. Maybe he'll get a big jug level. and he'll be just down in some. Uh... Okay, so what he's able to do it, he's got the ability. He plays all before, all the rounds before. He's playing at a brilliant level. The final played at a top top level, but then was unable in the crucial moments and critical moments. So say on break points, double faulted on yep. a point where he could have taken a uh, got a break opportunity, double faulted on crucial points where. Djokovic is under pressure, 30 all, double 40. It's another, it was similar to the women's final in a way. Like Muguruza, how many did so five dim- double faults in the two yeah, service yeah. games? So, exactly, so I can't be too harsh on team because I think at the end of the day, all, any, experience. all competitors will falter at moments of pressure. Yeah, but look, I want to say all, not Djokovic, not Nadal and not Federer. <laughs> but look where he's in his first two slam finals... He's lost in five sets, which is testament to him. If you see someone like Murray when he got to his first slam, I think he just got creamed by Federer straight sets on the first two that he got to. Yeah. Which and Murray is up there, and you knew he could compete. He just the nerves that he couldn't do it on that big okay, stage well, yet. He couldn't. Yeah, I get. Team that. will get there. Okay, he's nearly there already. He's close, but look at the top ten right now. What players can compete with the top three? Probably Medvedev. I don't think he can. I don't think he's got enough. Wawrinka. Nah, not now. On his day. Wawrinka can't anymore. He can't (laughs) now. (laughs) Can't anymore. He can't. He's not going to win a slam again, Wawrinka. How old is Stan? 37, I think? Probably like 36, yeah. No, no he's not. He's 34. 34. 34. He's one year older than one of them. 37. One year older than... Don't listen to him, Stan. No, Still you, spring chicken, mate. <laughs> You've got another slam in you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think Stan's going to win one. I think uh, the only person of shot versatility who's able to is team's got the shot versatility. Casper Ruud? No, not yet. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. But um, Big and then I'm going to surprise you with this next one. City a pass. Um, I, he can. But he's got no. He's got the. He's got slagged like, him um, off on the last episode. Mate, though. He's, not, he's just not been there, is he's he? He's down in the dumps. You're <laughs> kicking him while he's on the floor, mate. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> oh gosh, no, but he's he's got it, and it's just like it's going to be interesting to see how it develops. However, I just don't think 
from what I've seen on this final with teams display, I still do see see that the dominant of the the dominance of the top three is still going to continue for yeah, a while. this year for sure. Okay. Ultimately, we've got three more slams to go. Do you see another player winning it? No. Aside from the top three? No. No. Okay, so it reinforces everything I've said. Do you see them winning it maybe next year? Possibly, We It's yes. hard to predict now, really. We don't know be. what's going to happen. It's a bit of a silly question. I but think... Just I, out of interest, I'm just... In, based upon I mean, teams' uh, effort... I'm intrigued yes. to see where your head based is at. Based upon teams' it. effort, yes. I will wait and see how he does in the French. If he comes as close as he did last year, for sure. I would love him to win it. I would really love it. I'm a, I'm a massive Rafa fan, but... We want to see the new breed. I do want to see... I won't be disappointed if Rafa beats him in the final again. <laughs> However... You just want to see him <laughs> clawing away from... I just want him to get away from Djokovic just a little bit now, because this Djokovic just won. Feels However... Like, feels like for Spedera. No one even speaks about him anymore. No one's He's even at the cons- top, though, mate. The GOAT, he's at the top. I know, we don't give him enough credit. I wrote him off quite a few times and he just kept winning in five sets. He was very lucky this winning tournament. Winning in five sets too Very many times, lucky though. in this tournament. Like he, didn't, he wasn't very convincing with it all and he's clearly injured as well. Yeah, so. I mean, he had a problem with his back, I think. I think the French Open, he, he's not really in the in the running, really. Should have stayed for Wimbledon, I think. So I think Wimbledon now, hopefully he can get his injuries sort of together and hopefully he can have a good showing in it and go yeah. far because I, I would like to see him... I'd love to see him get to a final in Wimbledon. I'd love to see him win another. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, we had a message in from one of the new subscribers. One of the uh, fans. Yeah, finally. From the yeah, army. We need more, more the questions. GTO send, army. send the questions in. A uh, question came in from someone there, username peace underscore James 2408. <laughs> he wanted us to discuss the resurgence in Australian and US tennis. So yeah, thanks for your question, Pete. Yeah, thanks. Um, I think it's more James, not Pete. <laughs> <laughs> I want to call him Pete. Sounds cool. Anyway, cooler. yeah, thanks for yeah, thanks for the question. Yeah, no, it's it's true. The Australian tennis and American tennis are on the rise at the moment. What is it down to? Is the more the question what sort of baffles me? I think a lot of it is recent years, 2013, 2014 specifically, American tennis was on the on the massive downer. Yeah. And the reason for that was a lot of the a lot of people at college weren't weren't playing it like the scholarships weren't there yeah. people weren't playing so much in their colleges. Um, since then, I can only assume that's changed now more, and there's more people playing and coming through the ranks. We've seen we've already done an episode on Tommy Paul, yep. look at him, future star, played with Taylor Fritz, another American young Taylor player Fritz, coming up, yeah. Riley and, Opelka, um, Riley Opelka. There's a there's a lot of them. Who shocked me? TFO. Yeah. Francis Tia Five. Riley Apelka's 22. <laughs> I had no idea. So sorry, I thought he was like in his 30s. I, I apologise. No, I knew he was young. I didn't. I didn't have no clue. You're just, just looking at his height. Yeah, exactly. I don't know why I didn't put two and well, no, yeah. put two and two together and made five. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds so, about right with you. Yeah, that's it. But yeah, so there's a lot of young players coming through. And if you look at the Australians, it's the same sort of thing. You've got Alex Dimonor, brilliant player. Chris O'Connell, Chris not quite O'Connell. there, but, but he's a player who we really promising. love a lot. Promising. Really good. He bageled Rublev this year in the Australian Open. And Rublev has been he's won more tournaments this year than anyone. I know the year's what just about, started, but uh, he's still he's in great form. What about uh Popperin as well? Yeah, Alexi Popperin. Yeah. Name a few one. more Australian ones. Because there's a few of them as well. Obviously uh, Nick Kyrgios, but he's not really an up and coming. He's been around, he's a bit of an old head now, I feel. Um Pullman's. Mark, Mark Pullman, Pullman. We yeah, mentioned he's, him yeah, on he's a good pod. player. Yeah, good Not hard. quite there yet. Um, what other Australians are there? I say uh, really young. I mean, no one's super, super. I think young. Alex Dimonor is a really impressive I think one. He's the real. He's standout. a real standout for the, for Australian tennis. Jordan at the Thompson. Jordan Thompson. Twenty five. Okay. Yeah. But there's more than what there has been. Obviously, they went for an, they Did went you, for a stage with like McEnroe Mac, uh, and different players where American tennis was at, at its peak. Similar with the Australian guys. Who was the really good Australian players? What, Leighton Hewitt? Leighton right? Hewitt. Yeah. That's it. That's <laughs> <laughs> no, been great. Uh, and, and let's not just stick, stick to the men, obviously. In the women's, you've got Ashley Barty. Yeah, well, don't... don't well... Sophia Elf- Kenin. Yes. And Nisimova. Yeah, another one. Uh, Madison Keys. Yeah. Corey Goff. How yeah. do we forget about yeah. her? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. There's loads. There is a lot. So it's a really good question, actually, Pete, because... It's only been brought to our attention after you after you mentioned it. We've actually looked at it, and it's it is really clear to see Australian tennis and American tennis is on the rise. Yeah, 
how good for them. We just need British tennis to sort of follow follow suit now. Yeah, come on, GB. <laughs> <laughs> Murray goes out and everybody forgets any. Well, Edmund and Evans flying the flag. Evans is good. I like Evans. Uh, Evans is decent, yeah, for sure. I think Edmund's got a little bit further. Bit to hot go. cold. For yeah, me. got the ability, but just not quite there. Mm. But anyway, we'll do an L of the week towards the end of this week. Yeah. As I've, I've another as another podcast. Uh, I think we'll just wrap it up there. Yeah, that's our review of the uh, of the final. Of the final, yeah. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for listening. Yeah, um, thanks for watching. Just keep your comments coming in. Like, give us some topics to discuss. Yeah, yeah. We know that you're watching, and we know that you have more things that annoy you in the tennis world, or things that you think are a bit strange about the tennis world. Just send us a send us a message. Yeah, on annoyance, I promise I'll be a bit calmer for the next one. Yeah, don't. I hold you to that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. thanks for listening. Yeah, thanks for Cheers. watching. Peace. Bye bye.